Hi, friends. Welcome to another edition of uh, Faith uh, Greater Than Fear. And today we've got with us a uh, wonderful, I'm excited about our interview with uh, Timothy Vipan. Timothy, welcome. Hey, Mike. Well, uh, as we always try to do, uh, I'm here in Joplin, Missouri, get to serve as president of GMPI, Good News Productions International. And Timothy is here in Joplin as well, obviously remote. But Timothy, tell us a little bit about your family and uh, what you do right now. Uh, here in Joplin. Yeah, um, I'm a student at Ozark Christian College right now. Uh, it's my second year here. Um, just staying here in Joplin, Missouri for now. Um, from uh, Fresno, California. Uh, my family's there right now. And uh, yeah, but I'm just staying here with friends right now, at least for the rest of the semester. And uh, just, been, just been enjoying it. Uh, still working. I work there at GNPI. Uh, and do some uh, media resource management and go through photos and videos that come in from all the different regional centers. And I love my job. It's great. Well, we, we appreciate you. Tell me a little more personally, what are some of the things that the pandemic has personally affected you with? I mean, you know, you're studying online here, but you're here in Joplin. Explain to our audience why that is. Yeah, uh, it's pretty sudden and kind of crazy. I, about a month ago, I was just joking with my friends about the about the coronavirus. And then as spring break started, uh, I went with a few other Ozark students on a uh, backpacking trip. It was a school seminar. And uh, we didn't take our phones or anything with us. And when we got back, we were just stunned by all the news. And first thing we learned was that Ozark had gone online, uh, which was a huge shock, not realizing that we wouldn't be finishing the semester with our friends. Uh, I just had gotten a new roommate that I'd gotten really close to and I'm not spending the rest of the semester with him. And, not realizing we wouldn't have the in-class discussions like we used to. Um, and then the very next day after that, uh, just learning more and more information, like groups less than 10, uh, like only groups of 10 could meet. And then uh, churches had stopped meeting. That was a big shock for me. Uh, and then uh, I learned I couldn't stay in the dorms. Um, yeah, and then uh, I got a, a call from my dad. Uh, he... He called me the previous night uh, that to tell me that my grandpa was sick and to pray for him. And I hadn't thought too much of it when I'd first heard of it. Um, but then the next day when he had called me, I answered the phone just first words. I immediately could tell that uh, something was wrong. And he broke the news to me that my grandpa died uh, during the night. And um, so, of course, I, I planned to immediately go home. But as we talked through it and for a variety of reasons, we just kind of decided it would be best right now if I stay here in Joplin at least for a little while and um, at least until things kind of simmer down a little bit with the pandemic. Wow. Wow. Timothy. Well, first of all, sorry for your loss. And uh, I know we're going to in a moment here dig into that story of your grandpa and your family a little more, but for our listeners to understand that we have a term called internally di displaced people, IDPs. Now, a lot of times we think of that as people that are uh, displaced out of a certain part of the territory of a country or across the border because of uh, a war. But with this pandemic, we have other kinds of people that are IDPs. They're internally displaced. You're, you're an American, you're here you're in this space, but you can't get home. You're in Missouri and you can't get to your home and your family in California. And then you find out that your college is not operating like it was, so you can't stay in the dorms. You find out that I think you do a weekend ministry to a church and that church is now no longer meeting. So all of this is happening in a very disruptive manner. And then you find that uh, your grandfather has died. And I know you loved your grandpa a lot. Tell our listeners about him, your relationship with him, and the legacy that he's, he's leaving. Yeah, um, losing him was pretty rough. We really didn't expect it. It was a lot more sudden than we thought. Uh, I definitely thought we'd have at least a few more years with him. And he had had various health problems, but nothing too serious. And so it was kind of a, a shock for us. Um, He'd been living with our family in our house for about the last seven years or so since his wife passed away. Um, and in that time, I got into know him a lot better and grew pretty close to him. Uh, I didn't really get to know him too much before that, but in those seven years, I just got to know him and his story. And uh, he was born in the Soviet Union 
uh, orphaned as a boy, actually grew up to be a great man, really hardworking all his life. Uh, he was a first generation Christian. He actually became a pastor there in the Soviet Union and uh, where Christianity was illegal. And he just endured and persevered through so much persecution, so many struggles and really just incredibly hard times. Uh, and so it just his, his story and his legacy has been so inspiring for me. And um, in the last several years, uh, as we would talk with him, he mentioned several times and how he just wanted to go home, meaning heaven. And he just wanted to be with God and with his wife. And, but as long as he was with us, he had spent all his time praying. It was really incredible. He'd spend hours and hours every day and all the night whenever he couldn't sleep. Uh, he had just spent all that time praying, praying for not just our family, but for so many people, like missionaries and churches and uh, every person by name. It was amazing. He loved us so much and we loved him. So living, losing him was rough for all of us, especially my dad. And um, yeah, it was a hard time, especially just couldn't really do much of a funeral either, just a small graveside um, with just a few family uh, relatives and yeah. Well, he was definitely your hero and a hero to your family. And of course, you say first generation Christian for the listeners, meaning those before your grandfather and his lineage and Harris inheritance and legacy and so forth really probably didn't follow Christ. He did. And as a result, then his children and his children's children, of which you are one of them, have inherited that faith from grandpa and have taken on his faith and made it your own. Uh, that in itself is a wonderful legacy. And one of the things I wanted to share that uh, I really think you highlighted your grandfather did that our viewers who may be feeling like they're displaced, they're unemployed, they're older and can't get out for uh, health reasons, whatever, you can do like Timothy's grandpa and pray. You can make a difference. You are worth something. You are valuable and what you do in praying for your family, your neighborhood, your church, your community, your country, and the eradication of this virus is a significant kingdom building effort. And so thank you for highlighting that. Now, he passed away. You're reflecting on that passing. And then you recently wrote something, I think it was on social media, about your processing the idea of joy. Can you unpack that for our listeners a little bit? Yeah. Um... It actually kind of started on the backpacking trip uh, where it was a, a school seminar. One of our assignments was we had to memorize Romans 12. Um, and one of the parts that really stuck out to me was uh, verse 12, which tells us to be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. And uh, all of those, all three of those, of those things have been really big for me on the trip and then in this time. And, uh, but those last two are things I felt I've at least understood for a long time. Uh, uh, I know what they mean, but the first one being joyful and hope has been something I kind of struggle with uh, for most of my life. Um, joy is something that I never really understood. And many times I've asked people what it is, uh, but I, I feel like I haven't really gotten much of a satisfying answer every time I would ask because people would always say what it's not, or they would say things about it. Like uh, they tell me it's not happiness. It's not a feeling or an emotion. It's not dependent on your circumstances. Uh, it's always with you. Uh, but no one would ever say what it is. And so on the trip, I spent some time just kind of studying through the Bible, like uh, looking at different passages that talk about joy. And I came up with kind of framework in my mind that uh, a framework of a definition, which I only really put into a cohesive sentence Monday morning after I found out uh, the news. And so I define joy as a hopeful, hopeful contentment in a situation due to faith in and love for God as who he is. Uh, first of all, it's contentment. Like, I'm not happy about my grandpa dying or about any of the situation. It, uh, it sucks. I really wish I could be with my family right now, uh, but I'm content with the situation and I can't, I can be content because of my faith and love for God. You know, as I've grown in my relationship with him and my love and faith in him has grown, I've gotten to know him better. Uh, and this uh, faith in and love for God is who he It's, it's uh, in him as who he is, not as who I want him to be or make him to be. Uh, it's, uh, he, he's good. He's sovereign in control. He's omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient, and so much more. Um, that's who my faith and my love are in. And, you know, uh, it's hopeful contentment. Uh, I'm hopeful in the present that, uh, God knows what's best, that this was simply my grandpa's time. 
And I'm hopeful for the future that God will even use this very sad chapter in my life and this loss for his glory, that somehow he'll redeem this and use this, uh, that he'll work it out for good. And although I know my grandpa finally has peace and rest and, uh, I am still sad that he's gone, but I'm not in despair. Uh, I'm hopefully content, uh, because of my faith and my love for God as who he is. I have a joy. That is fabulous. And I hope our audience, uh, Timothy, was really listening as you unpack that with contentment, but describing it further, a joyful contentment, a hopeful contentment, not just happiness. It's like, say, it's not all these other things, but you really unpack that well. And thank you. Thank you for that. I, I think it's really beyond your years of experience already that you grasp this and I have no doubt it's going to bless others who listen particularly during this pandemic time when there just doesn't seem to be a lot of hope we don't have jobs we don't have stock market values we have people who are ill we don't know if we may be next we don't know if our relatives going to survive in ICU we don't know about the economy our rhythms our schooling of our kids our futures just a lot of hopelessness and yet in the middle of that you could say that as a idp as someone states away from your family during a very emotional time losing your grandfather who was a big influence in your lives um uh, yeah that i could have contentment i'm okay it's not what i choose but i'm okay and i think the apostle paul addresses that very very much so timothy thank you now as we start to wrap this up for these few minutes we've had together, man, I wish I had more with you, but tell our audience, what are some things, other things you'd like to say, these are things God's teaching me or I'm learning or I'm observing some of your life takeaways while you're in this different posture right now here in, in Missouri. Yeah. Um, yeah. Besides joy, I think uh, in this t uh, time right now, I've been faced with the question of, do I trust and follow God in every circumstance of my life, even in my darkest night and the hardest rain, uh, even when God is not answering my prayers how I want him to? Um, it's really been an invitation from God uh, to lean into him and to his strength and to stop trusting myself. Um, I've spent so much more time in prayer and journaling and reading the Bible, especially the, the Psalms and the Gospels. And uh, God's been, just been with me every single step of the way. And his word has been an amazing comfort in my life. And he's provided two great friends that are letting me stay with, uh, uh, with them for the rest of the semester. And that's been a huge blessing. And, uh, he's provided for all my needs and more. Uh, so even in this hard time, I've been filled with joy and I've been able to actually praise and thank God through it all. Wow. I, I thank you. So you're not just saying, Hey, I discovered something about contentment, but you're actually highlighting some of the points of how with God's provision, you are, being content right now in the midst of this pandemic and unprecedented time that not just we live here in Missouri or in California, USA, but, but globally around the world. So, uh, Timothy, Vipen, thank you so much for sharing uh, your heart, sharing your story, sharing a bit inside your own family. And for those of you listening today, we hope there was something that God used to talk to, to you about this really deep seated thing we all need, and that is joy and contentment. So stay tuned. If you like what Timothy shared and others that we interviewed, don't be ashamed to uh, share it either through uh, social media or whatever way that you have. Let others know because who knows, it may be your forwarding it on that's going to speak to somebody else today. So Timothy, from all of us at GMPI here in Joplin, Missouri, thank you and for helping us on another episode of Faith Greater Than Fear. Have a wonderful afternoon. 